Autism is it's a weird thing because it affects people. Everyone that's got autism, it's, they're affected differently. Um, I think growing up for me with autism, I think people just thought I was kind of maybe a bit of ADHD and you know shy. They just kind of thought that, you know, because obviously I think being in a, a smaller place and having a small school and stuff, you know, it, it was, I think, it, all, all the kids were hyper. Everyone would misbehaved and stuff, so I just kind of felt normal. But autism, I think, you know, if you're trying to explain it to someone who didn't have it, I think it's just, I mean, it's hard to, to explain. I think the people that need to kind of, that don't have it, have to actually physically see it. I think that's really helped the people that didn't understand it for me. When they did understand it, they really, when they seen it, because I had like friends to grow up from what, primary one all the way into secondary school. They knew when I was kind of in primary school, I acted a bit different, but they just thought it was kind of, you know, misbehaving. But then when I got into like older and older and older, the more they were with me, the more they were kind of questioning stuff and saying like, why is this, why is that? And then when I actually told them, they understood it. So I think, yeah, it's hard to explain it to someone that doesn't know about it because it's basically like a mask, isn't it? Like nobody knows I have autism because there's nothing physically strong with me, it's just mentally. But I think people do understand that when, you know, you start isolating yourself away from people when you're, you know, you don't want to be with everybody else. You want to be just alone all the time. And then that's when I think people start understanding there's more to Tom just being shy, there's more to Tom just being this, or he's got some sort of like additional needs. So yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it's really hard to explain, but I think that's kind of what it is. You know, for me as well, like I said, I don't look like it at all. And I think because I had, because I live in such a small place as well. And I think, you know, it was, it was kind of ignored for a long, long time because like I said, I was just around really hyper kids. I played sport the same as everybody else in, in my school, in primary school, I was quite, I wasn't at the lowest, I was in the middle. So I was just like, I kind of acted like a normal kid and treated like a normal kid. Speaking to Tom for the last three years, it's interesting to see how his mindset has been so concrete around his beliefs in Strongman. He knows that he'll be the world's strongest man. He has a certainty about it, and that is all because of his autism. For him, if he believes it, it is true. Today's video was made possible at mulliganbrothers.com where you can get the Memento Mori poster, a poster to remind you that you are going to die. It's 80 years of tiny squares where you shade them in each week and you're reminded that time is precious. Use code STOIC at checkout for 10% off. But before that, let's dive back into this amazing video from Tom Stoltman. I only kind of ever felt autistic when I was with family because that's when I did my, that's when I felt safe and could, you know, have my meltdowns and that. So yeah, it was really hard, I think, like I said on the outside, you know, it's it was really hard for people to understand it because I never ever acted in an autistic way in front of random people. And that's why I needed, like that's why my mum and dad needed the proof for the teachers and you know, other people like that because they never believed me until I did these actions. So until I think you physically see it, that's when you understand, wow, that's, that's why he needs this help and stuff. So. so one of the things that you've said loads of times and I've seen it impact loads of people as well, like it's really helped a lot of people, is that autism for you is a superpower. So how how is autism a superpower? Yeah, I mean, obviously I kind of started saying autism is a superpower the last few years, I think. I've kind of experienced, I think when you've experienced autism, you had it like a label, you know, like when you get called an autistic child, for anybody that's, you know, that bad, it's like, you know, I was getting called autistic or he has a label or, you know, and, and people don't believe that you've got this problem or they're just trying to, you're just trying to act, act it for attention. Uh, all this kind of stuff really can affect you mentally, you know, when obviously in primary school it was all right, but mentally teachers would say to you, like I said, teachers would not believe in you. They would kind of give up on you and work of other people. Like I said, they'd say, oh, maybe when like, I'm had, my mum and dad had meetings or other people had meetings or Tom's autistic, you know, like and when I'm in that room hearing that, it's like, they're basically labeling you and telling you, telling you you're worthless. So I think it was when I kind of started the gym, even, not even when I started the gym, like the last three or four years, like I said, when I started working with more professional people and really understanding my mindset um, to then flip it. Cause I, I, cause I, I used to always think autism took over my life. And I used to always, even, you know, when I left school, even when I started the gym, you know, I, I'm, I'm this different kid and I'm autistic and stuff. And yeah, maybe when I was 22, 23, started a straw man, started getting better and I was like, you know, I need to, I've got autism, I've got it for the rest of my life. I need to be able to control it and control it in a way that'll 
inspire me, but maybe help other people. And then saying it's a superpower. I mean, it is a basically a superpower because like only a percent of people in the world has this. And every single person that has it is smart in their own way. Like Albert Einstein, for example, the smartest guy in the world and stuff. And then, you know, other people, like you look up so many famous people that have autism and they were at the top of what they did or they were some of the smartest people in the world. And that's a superpower in itself. So yeah, I think it just, when I started working with professionals to help my mind, I just wanted to say that this is a superpower. And I just wanted to know that kids, I wanted to help kids before they got into school that, you know, in school you're going to get called autistic, in school you're going to get called this, but if you get call it your superpower yourself, you'll be able to rise above that and you know, you'll live with it, you'll be able to maybe talk sooner than I did, you'll be able to just help people around you, people understand you, and it's just, it will just give you that better life as you're growing up in, in school and stuff. So yeah, that's why I kind of changed it into, from it being like a negative effect to people to a positive and superpower. You can do anything you want in your life, even if you've got this kind of, Super, even if you've got this additional need, change it into a superpower and you can be the greatest thing in the world because like I said, it's an absolutely amazing thing when you control it and I think it's a cheat code for a lot of people and a lot of thing, a lot of people that have it, I think can say the same thing as well. So. What's the one sort of structure that you would give them to say like, if, if they're in a position where they're struggling with it right now, they feel outcast, how would you say like, this is how you maybe could go about it to feel better about it, to start using it to your advantage? Yeah, I mean, for me, the biggest thing would be kind of to have a plan in your life. I mean, it doesn't, plans don't always go together, but I think, you know, as my whole life, I can remember, I you know I've had, I've had a plan of what, you know, what time I go to school, what time this was, blah, blah, blah. And I think that's really important to take everywhere you go. So, you know, if you, if it's kids that are, you know, just starting maybe secondary school and they're scared to go into that bigger school, I think, you know, sitting down with parents and teachers and having that kind of plan written out to know where you're going to be in the school, what classes you're going to be and who you're going to be around is very, very important as well. And, uh, and yeah, that then just leads, I think planning, planning really just stops people stops kids and stops from overstimulating and uh, will really help them to know uh, with their way around the school, the way around life and it just really helps you in the day-to-day -day life and when you're getting older and older. Uh, I've been planning, I plan for my whole life and that's that's the thing that's really helped me um, from a young age. That's what my mum and dad did, that's what my sisters helped me with, Luke helped me with and yeah, planning is, a, is probably the most important thing I could say to someone that has autism and also to be open about it. Like, you know, you talk about people trying to hide it because they don't want to have a label, but that's why I'm trying to say it's a superpower. Be proud of it. There will be sitting, I guarantee the people that are, have autism will be better than, be better sitting that, the, that these normal kids aren't at. And that's the thing you need to kind of, you know, rely on. If someone's really good at maths, go take advantage of that and, you know, really show your skills and be proud that you've got this superpower that's helping you achieve your maths or whatever it is in life. But yeah, I think starting with a plan is very, very important. And then working your life out, working your, your life sorry, around that plan is the thing that really helps kids or you know older people with autism. So. For Tom, autism is a superpower. And genuinely over the years, I've seen that. Like when I first met Tom, he struggled to have a conversation eye to eye. And now he's completely different, but his autism did have a massive impact on his lives, but he on his life, but he's managed to change that into an extreme positive. F to be a professional athlete, it, it needs extreme regime. Um, you need to stick to the program to a T. You need to stick to your diet to a T. You need to do everything everything meticulously, and Tom has done that better than any professional athlete. The, the reason being is because with, with his autism, he needs to be in that routine. It needs to be exact. But then on the, on the other side of it is the belief system. I have seen Tom put 400 kilos on a deadlift bar, go to pick it up, and he could not budge it. And he would say before, or, or as he's doing it, he would be lifting it and he'd say, I haven't got it. And as soon as he says that, it goes to his head, then he can't do it. And you know, afterwards he'll, he'll be there be like, there's no way I'm lifting that. I, I can't lift that. I just can't lift that weight. He'll come back the next morning, which is unheard of by the way. He'll come back the next morning, put the same weight on the bar, be in a better frame of mind, believe that he's gonna lift it and it'll come up like an empty bar. 
to see that mindset in action is quite incredible. I would take it as far as this as well. Tom said, when we filmed this documentary that we've shot, that's coming out soon, guys, when we filmed it, Tom said to us when we first met that this year I'm going to podium World's Strongest Man and next year I'm going to win it. I would go as far as saying, because Tom said that he was going to podium that year, he podiumed that year. Now, is that a positive? Some people would say, yes, he came second place. And then a year after, he did win it. So he was like, he predicted the future. But what happens if he'd said, this year I'm going to win it, next year I'm going to win it, next year I'm going to win it? If he'd said that, he would have done it. That's what I genuinely believe. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but that is how powerful Tom Stockman's mind is. That's just my opinion. I'm always mesmerized by the way in which Tom is. I'm so excited for World's Strongest Man this year. Tom and Luke are looking incredible. Um, so yeah, me and Neva heading out to Ohio now. And keep your eyes peeled for my stone lift. Hopefully I don't embarrass myself. Keep your eyes peeled. Guys, this was all made possible at Mullingworths.com with a mission where we inspire change, where all the profits go back into this content. That's what we do. From the t-shirts, the hoodies, the journals, but also the brand new Momentum Mori poster. A poster which is 80 years of tiny squares that reminds you that as you shade them in each week that you're going to die. That's it, as simple as that. You are mortal and one day you will die. Time is precious. And it's been the most motivational tool for me. Use code STOIC at checkout for 10% off. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed and productive day. And I'll see you in the next one.